right. <clears throat> I'm gonna make a bunch of videos today just because um, I'm supposed to rain tomorrow and then I gotta work the five days after that just so I have some videos. Um, we got moved back from Otana in Claremont. Now we're picking back around here. So the bins is just right across the road. That's where we got the wagons and the cart over here. The first load in was 16.2%. Um, so it's just barely got to go through the dryer just for a quick flash, just to take a you know one point or get it down to 14 and a half or whatever, 15. Turn the fans on in the bin and call it good enough. But I used the mud hog to go around the field and to do like this, uh, there was standing water, like a big pond, like a 30 by 30 area water blasted through that. <clears throat> and now out in the middle, I'm going, I just turned the mud hog off in these long stretches where it's fairly dry on the top of this hill here. And um, speed it up just a touch here. Anywhere like right around like 5.8, 5.9. That's when, that's like the max speed for this head. If you go any faster than that, it cannot push the stocks down nicely and it just leaves them all lengthy and it's hard to rip. So, that way and then we can kick out a few more acres and get a little more done in the day that way too because uh, with it raining, we're trying to, there's a creek that goes like, this is the power plant for Faribault here. There's a creek that goes through, we got both sides of the creek and I think there's like a beaver or a muskrat. I, I think I'm pretty sure it's beaver problem. Some guy I'm pretty sure traps, but it was spongy. I had to leave like four to six rows just right here, but I got the rest of it. But uh, with that two and a half, three inches of rain coming tomorrow night, um, we figured we'd try to get this field off because uh, all that rain that's gonna push that crick up again and it'd be a long time before we could get back over here. It's really spongy right there. It's hard to steer into it through the mud on the headlands. But. Yeah, with the bigger tires too, <clears throat> and only the six row head, the combine can't quite turn around and come back on the same pass, it seems. Um, we got uh, 24 row headlands, so it's pretty tight. Um, that's why I kind of work it in a land here. It's more efficient too, I think, if you got a guy in the grain cart, then you can always dump. It's not just dumping the one way. If a combine gets full going this way, you can dump. If you're full that way, you can dump. It's, the cart can always be in the middle. So, I don't know. It's just my style of picking. Sidewinding all day, 60 acres. You know, that's that's going pretty good for us. So, field size and shape plays a big role into it too. I know some guys are probably thinking that we should be able to slam out more than that. And um, the guys did when they were down at that on the square, perfect square, 80 piece down in Claremont. The night before I we moved in and I picked uh, just enough to fill. Um, like three quarters of a semi and open up the field so we could park everything. And I think they started in the next morning around nine o'clock in the morning. And they finished the field at one o'clock, I wanna say, or no, 12.30. So 15 hours of picking and they did, um, well, they probably picked 70 acres for sure. Well, 75 acres, sorry, for sure. So 
35 acres in 15 hours, that's uh, I mean, that's pretty darn good. But they had three semis, the big thousand bushel cart, and then this thing, and they, you know, go, go, go. They had a guy in the cart, a guy in the trucks, and then obviously a guy in the combine, so. It's a little different up here. We got a whole bunch of curves and you know, waterways and little sloughs and swamps and whatnot, so. It's hard to get that amount of acreage done up here, but we run the combine just as hard. So yeah, here's six mile an hour. The combine wants to go faster. You know, I, I've picked it, I think the fastest you can go in gear two is uh, like 6.7 or 6.8 or something. But like I said, you just start leaving a mess with the stocks and uh, we don't, we don't stock chop. Um, the Ripper, it's a Wilrich. He got it a couple years ago, and it does an amazing job. Um, the stock chopper, it was one of those, I think it's one of a Lofness 30 footer. It's a three point style. For some reason, whatever, I don't think they were very well put together or designed or something. The first few years we used it, I bet you we went through three, three to five PTO shafts. It would blow up the PTO shafts. So, we kind of just put away with it, and um, the Ripper does a fantastic job. Um, I'll, uh, I'll try to show you guys if I, uh, towards the end of season, or if the Ripper gets in the same field as us. Sometimes when we finish harvest, you know, I do a, you know, a few days of ripping to help get, just get it over with. Um, let me show you what kind of job that thing does. It, it's, it's quite amazing. So, yeah, we try not to rip, so we try to keep the stock short with the corn head. We try to keep them neat, you know, because if you got long, lengthy stuff, it doesn't quite push them down. It just has a little bit of trouble going through the rippers. So, it's like a fine line of hurry up and finish harvest and don't make it hard on the guy running the ripper. So, right now I'm leaning towards a little more of the hurry up and finish harvest because a lot of trees have lost their leaves completely and um, you know I'm just afraid that you know it gets down below freezing at night now we got hard frost at night you know we're talking all this rain it could easily turn into snow so and then we'd be really in it we would be uh, in for a battle so I hope we don't have to pick any corn in the snow but the least amount of corn we can pick in the snow the better so we just got to make a big push and go 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 so i took some vacation from work so i have to go back and work uh, for five days and have training on another one of the days off but then after that starting on halloween i got 15 days off so we are going to try and finish harvest by the end of my 15 days off That would put us at November 14th or 15th. And I hope we're not picking then. I hope we have tillage about wrapped up by then, but uh, you know, I'm sure there'll be curveballs here and there in the weather, and let's do the best we can. Just wanted to <clears throat> see how this video turns out wearing this new camera on the on the head mount because uh, it was a little tricky operating the combine and holding on to the stick that I had the I had the GoPro on the tripod one three three way tripod where you can hold on to it or make it into a tripod or something else. And trying to steer and run the joystick it was really jerky and a few times I missed the turn into the road just because it's hard to film and drive and everything all at once. So I. Uh, so you guys can see that I'm not that bad of an operator. It's a little smoother, smoother operating when uh, I don't have to hang on to the camera. So I don't know if you guys can see this pass up here is going to give us a pretty good hopper.
it's only the two of us too, so it makes it pretty tricky in terms of trying to cover some ground during the day. You got one guy that's got a just hot seat and constantly getting a different wagon or cart or this or that. And I'm out here and I have to try to figure out, you know, can I make it around or have to come back and dump. And uh, Once in the evening when we get a bunch of guys up here, usually we make a pretty good push by then. So, um, we still kick out a decent amount of corn during the day, but if you don't have manpower, I mean, you can have the biggest equipment you want, but uh, manpower is key. video. It's probably gotten pretty long. I picked the hopper full while I was talking there.